everyone, welcome back. It is now the season for festive red lips and I've added a fun twist to this one, a red ombre wings liner, which is actually much easier than it looks. A bunch of my good friends are also doing red lips for the silly season, so go check out their tutorials. The links will be in the description box and I'll also put them on the screen at the end. I hope you enjoy. Starting with the eyes today, we are priming the eyelids so that our eyeshadow doesn't crease throughout the day. I'm also adding some concealer from the crease to the brow. This is just to conceal all of the redness and the veins that I got going on. I'll also set with a flesh tone powder so that our base is velvety and the eyeshadow adheres evenly. Now obviously you don't need to do all of these steps but if you're wearing red on the eyes, a perfect canvas doesn't hurt. Next, we're gonna grab some tape. This is optional, but I promise you it makes life a lot easier. Position the tape on the outer corner of the eye. This is going to act as a stencil for our wings liner. Since the focal point of this look is actually the bright wing, we're gonna keep the eyeshadow pretty simple. Just some basic socket contouring. Starting with a pale peach transition shade in the area above the socket. Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek, it doesn't register as much on my skin tone, but every step helps in attaining that perfect gradient. Moving to a slightly deeper shadow, we're beginning to focus that shading on the outer corner of the eye. And when there is less product on the brush, you can sweep inwards through the rest of the crease. I've chosen super warm eyeshadows here because I think they pair beautifully with the red wing, but um, feel free to use cooler tones if that fits your complexion better or you prefer it. Finally for the eyeshadow, I told you it was simple, I'm grabbing a deep burgundy to add some extra depth in the outer V area so that we get a bit of a winged eyeshadow placement. Now for the fun bit, the red wing. This is going to polarize everyone, but I promise you the final outcome is actually pretty subtle. Now that we have our stencil, the wing is pretty foolproof. Simply trace along the seam of the tape and then you can beef it up until you're happy with it. I'm not dragging the red gel across the lash line. You can if you like. I'm going to do it in a different shade, so bear with me. Since this gel liner is more of a dark red and I want a bit of a punchier red, I'm patting a vibrant eyeshadow on top of it and this works a treat. It really brightens it up. Now you can peel off the tape, pat yourself on the back, job well done, you're a boss. Next take a black gel liner. This one has golden sparkles in it and it's glorious. Lining the lash line in black helps to ground this look. So it separates the whites of the eyes from all of those red tones and in essence it makes it more wearable. When you reach that wing area, just back blend the two shades lightly and you will achieve that cool ombre effect. So it goes from a vibrant red to a deep red to a black. Go ahead and tight line. Again, this distinguishes the redden tones from the eyeball so that you won't look sick. For lashes, I have been loving the House of Lashes Pixie Lux because they are super duper wispy. Now, they do obscure the liner a little bit, but I think it works in our favor here. You get more of a peekaboo effect as opposed to a like, whoa, red liner, wow. While the lashes dry, let's finish off the face makeup. Now, if you know me and you frequent my channel, You'll know that I tend to be quite minimal with base makeup and I've been getting a lot of requests to do more done skin. Your wish is my command, let's have fun with it. I'm priming just the tip of the nose with a pore filling primer, really like this one by Makeup Forever. It fills my pores. Then brightening the planes under the eyes with a light reflective concealer. The Maybelline Age Rewind is so bomb for this purpose. If you love that super bright under eye look, definitely give it a go. For foundation, surprise, surprise, I'm using the Kogan Do Aqua. I've used this in my last 10 tutorials and it is one of the best formulas for dry skin in my experience. Bouncing that all over the face with a beauty blender, I think you guys have seen this all before so we can whiz straight through it. I have had so many requests for baking, wow. If you are not familiar with this technique, you pick up a whole heap of translucent powder on a sponge and then you pack it 
heavily in areas that you want to brighten. Give it about 10 minutes or so to cook or bake before sweeping it away. It's an effective technique if you have very strong hollows or shadows under the eyes. That's me, actually, I'm describing me, <laughs> because it creates the illusion of a very flat surface. If I'm honest, it always feels like a lot of makeup to me. So maybe best for special occasions, but you do you. While that's baking away, you can have a dance break, get a snack, uh, do your brows. Lately, I've been doing a three-step brow process. My brows are very high maintenance, let me tell you. So I start off with a brow pencil first, just to strengthen the shape and fill in any massive ball spots. Then I'll go in with a brow pen, mainly to create a very fine tail. Brow pens are really great if you love a very fine tail to your brow. And of course, I will set it all in place with a brow gel. Now we can go ahead and lightly sweep away the excess powder under the eyes, and you can see it right there. It definitely looks brighter and any of the hollows have been illuminated. To add some color back into the face, I'm grabbing my Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow palette. This is a stunning palette. I don't frequently use it in tutorials because it's always at my vanity. I'm using it every day. The bronzer portion is fabulous for pale skins. It does have a teeny bit of shimmer. So I'm not sure that I would recommend it for contouring, so to speak, uh, but beautiful bronzer. I do love a cheekbone and the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder is kind of the best contour on earth. If you haven't tried this, you should because it will change your makeup life. Contouring placements really vary depending on your face shape, but I'm hitting the pretty typical contour zones like the temples, hollows of the cheekbone, bit under the jaw. I'm also taking this opportunity to bake underneath the cheekbone. This is another very common placement for baking. It makes your contour look very crisp. Baking this area really doesn't suit my face at all, unfortunately. I'm quite tanned at the perimeters of my face. So when I put a strong highlight underneath the cheekbone, it just sort of makes my face look lighter than my body. Um, but I thought that I would show it to you today in case you were curious and you wanted to try it yourself. I'm not used to being this matte, so totally overcompensating with a ton of highlight. Going back to the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow palette, this has a very intense, very golden highlight, and I think it pairs nicely with all of the warm tones on the eyes. Forgot to mention that the longer you leave that powder to bake, the brighter it gets. So I'm just gonna brush it away right now. A few finishing touches on the eyes. You could absolutely smoke out this lower lash line, that would look awesome but I'm just adding a little bit of burgundy eyeshadow on the outer half of the lash line, so it's not entirely bare. Of course, coat the upper and lower lashes in your favorite mascara, and let's move on to the lips. Going in with a red lip liner, just to get my shape right and get my crisp edges, I find it tricky to carve out a lip line with a liquid lipstick. Said liquid lipstick is by LA Splash. My God, don't even approach this lip color if you have super dry lips like me. I think that my lips just about fell off that night. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> also, FYI, if you've got a sensitive nose, smells like paint. This bright lip is definitely draining my complexion. So dusting a bit of coral blush up the cheekbones. In hindsight, I really could have used a heavier hand here, but it's just like my hands won't let me cause I don't wear a whole lot of blush, you know? Old habits die hard. Have I got room for another lip color? The answer is yes, I do. I'm adding a little bit of UV orange lipstick just to the center of the lips for some pow. This lipstick actually glows under UV light, which is pretty cool, am I right? And here I am desperately trying to soften that jawline bake with a bit of bronzer. It didn't work, but I did try. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. It's not the quickest of looks, but you do it for the love of makeup, you know? Come visit me on my Instagram, and don't forget to check out the plethora of red lip looks from some of my dearest friends. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we shall speak very soon. Bye-bye.